at least the weather's cleared up. Yes. When I woke up this morning down there on the beach, I thought, thank goodness the gale's gone down. Yes. I mean, you don't expect storms on a nice summer cruise, do you? Do you have to knit all the time? It keeps your hands busy. Always keep your hands busy, my mum says. I must say, you're taking being shipwrecked very calmly, Miss... Uh... Doreen? Just call me Doreen. When you've been shipwrecked with someone, you should be friendly, shouldn't you? And you are? Barlow. Arthur Barlow. On your own, were you? Yes. That's nice. Nice that two people on their own should get together like this. Now, what can we do to pass the time? Well, we'll have to make plans. Plenty of fresh water here, and I expect those nuts and berries will be edible. I wonder if there are any animals I could trap. How about a nice cup of tea? I beg your pardon? Tea? With a biscuit, of course. Fancy it. My dear Miss uh, Doreen, we do not have nice cups of tea and biscuits. We are mar Good heavens. I do. Where, where did you get it? My cabin steward left it for me. He knows I get peckish at night. Oh, there's no sugar. Is that all right? Uh, quite all right. Anyway... The ship sank before I had a chance to get peckish last night. So I grabbed my knitting bag, because I'd promised Mum I'd finish this jumper for her no matter what. And then I took the tea for something to drink in the lifeboat. Oh, that's mm. good. It's still warm. I thought I'd never taste tea again. Have some more tea. The last thing my Mum said to me before I went on this cruise was, Take your knitting bag, Doreen. You'll be glad of it. And I was. Your mum says quite a lot, doesn't she? Oh yes, a tower of strength my mum is. I was taught that every girl needs a good mum behind her. That tea was nice. We need a shelter we can use during the night. A shelter? We won't be here that long. How do you get off the island before tonight? There'll be another boat along soon. Well, it could be weeks before we found. Don't you realise that? Weeks? I can't be here for weeks. I work on a fish counter, and my boss is very strict, Mr Patterson. He says that if I'm not there at 9 o'clock sharp on Monday morning, I get an hour docked off my wages. I have to be back for Monday. Look, you can just forget about Mr Patterson and the fish counter and... <laughs> forget about him? Twelve years I've worked at that fish counter. I'm the fish counter supervisor now. Well, we'll just have to make the best of this situation. We're marooned, cast ashore high and dry. Well, do something about it. You're a man. Men are supposed to know how to cope with this sort of thing. So go ahead and cope with it. That's what I'm trying to do. Do it then. Right, well, first we assess the situation. Which is? I have to be back at the fish counter first thing Monday. That we're stuck here. Just the two of us, right? Well, it doesn't take much brain to see that there's only two of us. <laughs> Any hobbies that might be of use? No, none. Work. You're on the fish counter. Well, we'll have to eat a lot of fish. I only sell them. I don't know how to catch them or clean them. They're dead. So all we have to do is catch some filleted fish <laughs> and find someone you can sell them to. I'm a very good salesperson. I won a prize when I won this rotten cruise. That's what I won and I wish I'd come in second. Don't get, don't get upset, Miss Doreen. I'm sure you're an excellent sales girl, but we don't need sales girls, do we? We need just about everything else. Well, what about you? What do you do? I'm an administrator. What do you administrate? Funeral parlours. What did you say? I said I worked for a funeral parlour. You mean an undertaker? A funeral parlour. <gasps> oh. Well, someone has to do it. I'm sick of all this fuss every time I tell someone what I do. A date with death? A what? A date with death. That's what my mum read in the tea leaves the night before we sailed. A ship, water... A date with death. 
That's you! Don't talk rubbish. I'm very much alive and so are you. And I very much plan to stay that way, so don't you get any silly ideas. I bury people, I don't kill them. Nobody accuses you of murdering your damn supermarket fish, do they? Don't shout at me! I'm not shouting. Don't cry. You, you can't afford to lose the salt. I'm going to grow old here and die here and you're going to be happy because you're going to be able to arrange my funeral, won't you? No, I won't. Look, I don't want to stay here either. I'm trying to think of something. Well, climb that tree over there and look for ships. You can't climb a palm tree unaided. Islanders use ropes and sharp things on their feet. Will you? You can use my knitting needles after I finish this sleeve, but if you're quick with them. I'm not climbing a palm tree with knitting needles, <laughs> and that's final. Build a boat. I will. When I found out how to cut down trees and shape the wood, not to mention making a sail. Perhaps a plane might fly over. <laughs> Hasn't been one so far. You're not trying. You're not giving me a chance. I tell you what. I'll swim out there and I'll catch a cod and I'll bring it back. You can explain the situation to it and then I'll let it go. And when it turns up at the fish market to see Mr. Patterson next Monday, nine o'clock sharp, it can bloody well tell him where you are. That's better. Now, I'm going to build a shelter for tonight. Two shelters. Did you say something? Well, I'm not sharing a shelter with a man I only met a few hours ago on a lifeboat. Oh, yes, you are. <laughs> We're under island law now, and don't you forget that. Are you married? Oh, well, yes, but... Uh... And the next thing you'll say is that she doesn't understand you anyway, isn't it? Now, just a minute. I couldn't be part of, be part of such deceit. I couldn't look mum in the face. I couldn't do it and look mum in the face. Look, let's leave your mum out of it for a start. She's out of your life now. No, she's not. My mum's very important to me. I don't do anything without talking over with mum first. Ah, I could have been shipwrecked with Katy Perry or Taylor Swift. Why did I have to get landed with a mother complex? Don't go insulting mum like that. Every girl needs a good mum behind her. That's right, Doreen. You tell him. What? What's she doing here? I told you, I don't feel right without Mum. Get rid of her. What do you mean, get rid of her? That's my Mum you're talking about. She's not really here. She's a figment of your imagination, that's all. She's only here because you won't put her out of your mind. She's really at home. Watching telly. But it wasn't a very good film anyway, dear. You see, she is a figment of your imagination. Oh, I know that. So all you have to do is stop thinking about her and she'll vanish. I couldn't do that to Mum. Yes, you could. Go on, stop thinking about her. Well, I wouldn't know how to stop thinking about her. Besides, if she's here, it's because I want her to be here, isn't it? That's right, dear. And if I want her here, I wouldn't want to send her away again, would I? No, you wouldn't, love. Doreen... All right, then. I'll think of Constance. How would you like that? Perhaps she's busy thinking of something else? Doesn't seem to want to know, Constance. doesn't she? Constance! Perhaps she's taking the phone off the hook. Shopping. That's what she'll be doing. Out spending my money. Women. It's a neck our Doreen has. You have to be really fond of someone before it works. I didn't really want to hear anyway. His wife doesn't really understand him. Mm, they never do. Doreen, you're going to have to make a choice. Her or me? A girl needs a good mum behind her. A girl needs a good mum behind her. Doreen, just think about it. We're facing a new life together. You just want me to share that shelter with you, don't you? I just want you to realise there's a whole new future here. But we wouldn't be married. We will be, in our own way. Huh? What about your wife? Forget her. Oh. Well, what if... What if you meet somebody else and I, when I'm old and worn out or a beautiful woman got washed up on the shore? I wouldn't. Oh, yes, he would. 
Either she goes, or I will. Where would you go? I'll find somewhere. Go on then. All right then, I will. <sighs> Isn't it lovely and quiet here? Hmm, wouldn't mind an iced tea though. Ah! Oh, Mum, I wish you hadn't made me think of iced tea. I came back. I can see that. Somehow, somehow, I, I never thought it would be like this. Did you forget something? There was nowhere to go. There never is, not really. I always wanted to be important. I thought I might be important here to you. But I can't climb a palm tree. I I can't open coconuts with my teeth. I can't get help and I bang my leg on a rock back there. It'll get better soon. Come on, cheer up. All right, I will share that shelter with you. But what about? She's not happy about it, but she'll just have to lump it. After all, I did refuse Tom Irvine because of his ears. Irvin turns out to have a wife and two children in Newcastle. We won't mention that if you don't mind, Mum. Well, let's settle that. I'll start work on the shelter, shall I? Shall I come and help? Oh, I think I should manage. Turn my hand to a fair bit of do-it-yourself at home. I can't do anything except knitting, of course. It's good that you can make things yourself when you've got a wife and family to support. Mm, just a wife, no children. Why not? Well, Constance doesn't really care for... Doreen, could you please stop thinking about your mother, even for a little while? But if I let her go, I might not be able to get her back again. Why don't you try it? Too late for that. I have made up my mind to stop until I'm satisfied. About what? Your intentions. What about future prospects? <laughs> From what I can gather, not too rosy. I'd want children. All right, then we'll have children. You'd like to have a daughter, wouldn't you, Arthur? Daughter? Hmm. Wouldn't mind a son. Uh, we'll name him Norman. No, a daughter, Sophie. Who? Sophie. No, Norman. Why not Sophie? Uh, I, I knew a Sophie once. I didn't like her. Well, you're like my Sophie. She'll be very well behaved and nice. And she's going to be a brain surgeon. She was a bitch. <laughs> Grew up to be an all-in wrestler. Not my Sophie. She's, my... she's going to be a what? A brain surgeon. <laughs> How could she be a brain surgeon if we're stuck on this island? I've set my heart on it. She'll have to be a boat builder or a fisherman or fisherwoman or whatever it's called nowadays. Not, not my Sophie. Not me. I'd rather be a brain surgeon. Your father says you have to be a fisherman. You've been thinking about Sophie too, haven't you? For years and years. Why can't I be a brain surgeon? Oh, Sophie, your father's being very difficult. I've had such a trying day with him, you just can't imagine. That's what my mum's name was, Sophie. That is a right out. <laughs> I don't hold with calling children after relatives. It only means you have to go on and on having children until all the names have been used up. By the book of things, you won't be doing anything else anyway, will you? Are you going to have a daughter and name her Sophie after my gran, or are you not? I don't see why I should. Okay, there's nothing left to say then. I would like to say... Shut up, you. Well, I'd best get on with that shelter then. Two shelters. I beg your pardon? Well, if we're going to quarrel like this, and you're going to insist on having your way all the time, I'd like to have my own shelter, please. Oh, bloody hell. Who's this? I'm your grandma. Do you live here too? Only a matter of speaking. I'm tolerated and no more. Oh, all right then, Sophie. Thank you. And now I'm going to build that blasted shelter before you change your mind again. Hey, what about me? What's about you? What's going to happen to me? That's a stupid question. Yes, it is, Sophie. I'm surprised at you. You'll be born like anyone else and you'll grow up. That's what will happen to you. Take things as they come. That's what your mother and me always had to do. But I want to be a brain surgeon. How can I study brain surgery here? Exper experiment on coconuts. She's right, Arthur. 
will get off the island before it's time to worry about that. But there's more early education to consider. You can't just neglect that, you know. I can teach you how to cook and how to knit. Knitting's good for your hands, and you have to have good hands if you want to become a brain surgeon. I can teach you how to make things. Fat lot of good that will be to someone, to someone who wants to study brain surgery. I'll teach you to fish and to swim. I didn't see much sign of you swimming when I towed you ashore with my knitting bag. I was stunned then. I happen to swim very well. Why can't I have a father who can teach me useful things? Yes, why can't she have a father who can teach her useful things? Because I'm an administrator, that's why. Burying people's not going to get her very far in life. You know, Norman, I'm beginning to wonder if this is going to work out. You're not my type, not really. She's off again. And you can keep quiet, Mum, or I'll stop thinking about you. Oh, no, I'm staying. I've been here long enough to feel quite solid. I can stay by myself now. Well, if you're feeling that solid, there's nothing to stop me from pitching you in the water, is there? Doreen, that's enough. Thank you, Sal. Now, don't you go thinking I'm taking your side. We need each other when she gets on a high horse. Behind every successful husband stands her mother-in-law. Doreen. Look, what a fine partner you've turned out to be. There's that lass standing over there waiting to learn something that's going to stand her good stead in life. And what can her father teach her? How to bury people. I didn't exactly do that myself. I'm an administrator. Well, what good is an administrator when there's nothing to administrate? It's no more useless than someone who can sell fish but doesn't know how to fill it, the damn things. Don't get personal. I'd give anything right now to slam a door. Well, you'd have to make it first, and before you do that, you can build me a boat, because I'm leaving. You can't leave now. What's going to happen to me? Shut up. It can be a small boat. Tell me about the boat. Well, I thought uh, that is... Uh... I think you've got him, Doreen. You don't know how to build a boat, do you? It would, it would sink if I made it. Everything goes wrong with me. Look, what are you going to do about my future? Stop bothering your father. Go away and look for something useful to do. Oh, Arthur. I'm sure you could do with, with encouragement and time, and we've got plenty of time. You could build a beautiful shelter. Really? And a wonderful boat. You can do it, Arthur. All a man needs is a good woman behind him. Or two good women. Even better. I don't see why not. I thought we could make a shelter by lashing palm leaves together. A temporary measure, of course. Once I get going, I can make a proper hut. What do you think? Lovely! We'll need creeper to tie the leaves. Or wool. Now you'll need that to knit my sweater. Oh yes, so I will. Creeper then, I'll go look for some. Shall I come and help? Constance would never have offered to help me. I know. Do you think we can make wool out of creeper? Hmm. Look, I don't care how you feel about it all. It's my future and... Where are they? <laughs> They've gone to build a shelter. One shelter. Yes, romantic, isn't it? That means I'm going to happen whether I want it or not. Probably. I bet you're a rotten father. I bet you won't be able to teach me anything at all. After they've built a shelter, they're going to build a boat. Really? She's going to stand by him. A man needs a good woman to stand by him, Sophie. Do you think he'll be able to build it? Boat? No, no, I think so. Uh. <laughs> you see, Sophie, every good woman needs her mum behind her before she can stand behind her man. That's why I'm staying. You mean you're going to help them, you're going to, help them to build a boat properly? <laughs> I'm going to try. Could you try hard, for my sake? Well, seeing that you are the, to be named after my dead mum, and you are a nice girl, and your parents couldn't be trusted to bring you up the right way on this island, I try hard. Thanks, Grandma. Never forget, Sophie, that behind every successful brain surgeon stands her granny. That's true. Thank you.